what is a pentolin gudgeon? Well, they're the parts that actually attach the rudder to the boat. So in this episode, I'm going to cast a set of each of them and also get the rudder shaped and temporarily installed. So all that's coming up on this episode of The Art of Boat Building. So as usual, in order to get started with our gudgeon and pintle, we need to refer to the plans. So here on sheet six, we can see the gudgeon and pintle drawings. Now on this particular drawing, these are drawn uh, actual size. So you see that there aren't any dimensions on here. So in order to know their size, we'll need to scale off of there. Uh, so since it's actual size, I can measure that across and see that it is uh, 1 and 3 sixteenths wide. And then this way it is 2 and 13, 2 and 13 sixteenths long. Now, the only thing that it does show as a dimension is here is the length of the pin. And it shows that it's 1 and an eighth. Now, it's broken here. Uh, for just so that it doesn't take up space on the paper. But the minimum is that that needs to be one and an eighth long. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make uh, patterns of these. Now, if you remember in the past uh, episode that we talked that the, the pattern is exactly the object that you want to make. So I've made a couple here of patterns that I've made. And you can see that here is the gudgeon. So you can see it fits right on top of there, the exact size. And then this uh, view is the end view here. Now, I haven't drilled a hole in there because I need to cast it first. And I'll drill the hole after the piece is made. Same thing with these two holes here for where it gets anchored onto the transom. And the other piece then is the pintle, and you can see I've got this piece here. Now I made the pin here, I used a 5 8 inch dowel rod. Uh, the final piece is actually a half an inch. Uh, now both, all of these patterns uh, split in two so that uh, I can uh, ram them up in the sand. Uh, so the same thing will have to happen with this. There will certain be a certain amount of machining that I'll need to drill these holes in here. And then I'll need to turn the spindle down, or the uh, this pin down, down to the half inch size. Well, one of my challenges is that I don't own a metal lathe. So as luck would have it, uh, as you know, I live in a small town, of a little more than 5,000 people. And in a small town, you're acquainted with pretty much everyone. Doesn't necessarily know all of them, but you certainly know of them. Well, a neighbor that lives about five or six doors down from me, Steve Colburn, I knew as an amazing engineer and a great craftsman. So I had posted on social media some things about the foundry, and his wife had seen him and told Steve about it. So he gave me a call and we started chatting about foundry work. Turns out he had cast the hardware when he was in high school for an ice boat that he had built. So this would have been in the uh, late 50s, early 60s to uh, my best guess. And he um, cast aluminum bronze. So he made his own alloy. He'd go down to the railroad yard and get uh, coal to build his foundry with. So in addition to having done some foundry work like that, he had also built a small sailboat called a penguin. And it's about an 11 foot dinghy. So we had a lot to talk about. And as it turns out, he owns a metal lathe. So at the end of our conversation, he offered to help me turn that uh, pintle down and bore out that gudgeon. So, Later in the episode, we'll take a visit to Steve's house. But first, we need to get these parts cast. Before I light up the furnace, 
I wanted to report in on the uh, manifold system that I had come up with to help solve the freezing of the propane tanks. I'm happy to report it worked extremely well. I had absolutely no issues with the tanks freezing up. Now I must admit that there's also other factors involved here in that the tanks were actually sitting next to the barn doors, which of course are not very weather tight and it's considerably colder over there. So by positioning them uh, within like three feet of the furnace, there's actually the air around them is much, much warmer. The other thing I did was I elevated them up off the ground so that the air could circulate underneath them. So I think the combination of those two things, of putting in a manifold where I connected two tanks together at one time, and with the uh, ambient temperature around the tanks being higher, I had no issues with the propane tanks freezing up. So let's get this furnace fired up and cast some metal.
Steve studied mechanical engineering at the University of Illinois. I began asking him about his work experience, and he started telling me about his first five years were in first France. First five years, uh -huh. the, um, worked at uh, Ecole Polytechnique in a research lab, because I had mechanical engineering was a uh -huh. physics minor and stuff, you know, math. And, so I got a pretty good job there, interesting research type work. And then uh, came back here and taught at ICC in engineering for five, five and a half years and mm -hmm. then went to Caterpillar. So, oh. so I ended up going to Caterpillar when I was 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> for 25 more years <laughs> and retired. So, so oh. I'm retired from there. It's not a bad place to retire from. From over 15 years now. So. Oh. That's <laughs> yeah, great. So, so yeah, it's, it's been a variety of interesting things. Yeah. Um, do we want to come down and, and face this too? Because that's going to mm -hmm. be your bearing surface. I think so, yeah. So we'll want that, to come in and then, yeah. Yeah, that, because that I won't be able to do by hand very well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, we can do that. Mm -hmm. we'll do it a little bit at a time. But I think we're, I think we're not too bad here. Yeah, we're ready. Perfect, but it's pretty close. I I'm going to face this off now okay. and, and do the shifting in the start there. <laughs> So that's, we're still almost a sixteenth of an inch to go on the diameter. Same again, we'll be at 507. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. about take it off by blowing on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> you to tell me um, about your why we're leaving it longer. Oh yeah, I was mentioning that I have a, a, a penguin sailboat that has stainless steel pintle and gudgeon that were purchased and both of the pins are the same length so when I put it on I lined it up exactly and when you want to put the rudder on you're holding the rudder and you've got to make both pins exactly right before you can drop it in if one of them was a little longer if you could get it in there and then bring it up and do the second one it would certainly make it easier yeah you know especially when you're sloshing around in the water and <laughs> <laughs> want to get it on okay so so you're saying the shorter one would be one and an eighth and uh, well yeah, let's say one, one and a quarter, and a quarter well, so. how, how long do we have there um we can go well this, currently it's all the way out to one and nine sixteenths so one and a quarter we could we could you know just do one and a half 
Yeah. Just barely knock off my center hole there. I think, yeah. Well, well and even if the center hole's on there, it be won't a little really matter. Some of the center yeah. hole left. But. Yeah, just so long as it's... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you put that 30 degrees on there... Yeah, first let's... Because I don't think it has it to be... A, knock about an eighth of an inch off of there, and then we can come back and... and okay. And bevel it. After the pinto, we got started with a gudgeon. I had to create a small bracket in order to hold it so that it would fit into the chuck. Four, nine, eight, two thousands. So I'll bump it up a couple here. That'll get us just on the plus side. <laughs> here that'll get us just on the plus side <laughs> do the chest here yeah okay okay i think i got it there that's good yeah i was gonna say if it if it's off you know you'd have to be off a quarter of an inch down here to mind that up so, now <laughs> how far apart are they on the um, uh -huh. I'm guessing they're about 18, 20 inches. Yeah, that's plenty of... Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're not going to bind them. No. There. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks great. <clears throat> Clean up the outside a little bit. Yeah. So I've got all of the parts all finished now. Um, you can see that I've got all of the holes drilled in it. Uh, so the, the clearance for these, you can see it slides in there really nicely. Uh, the clearance is about three hundredths uh, of an inch in there. So that would be, um, you know, about 1.5, about 0.015 smaller than a half inch here and about uh, 0 0.015 bigger than a half inch here. So there's just enough play in there that it should be easy to, to get those to slide on there. So now that I've got the hardware all finished, the next step is to get the rudder cut out. To get started with our rudder, we can go to sheet three here, the line plan for the boat, and we can see the shape of the rudder here and all of the dimensions we need in order to lay that out. Uh, 
the plans are one and a half to one foot scale. So if I look at my one and a half to one foot scale here, I can see that the length of it is about four feet and the width is about a foot and a half, 18 inches. Now what all of these numbers mean, uh, this clearly is clear in that each of these marks coming out are six inches apart. And that these notes here show the uh, distance that this is out. Now, this number uh, is indicated by that the one means one foot, the three means three inches, and the four knee means four eighths, or half of an inch. So the distance between here and here is one foot three and a half inches. And if we put our scale on there, we can see one foot three and a half is exactly what it comes out to be. So that's what all of these uh, numbers mean. And this is very typical um, lofting notations. You know, so this would be 11 foot 1 eighth. This would be 1 foot 4 inches and so on. So the first thing that I want to do is to prepare some plywood for that. So I got some half inch marine grade plywood that is Douglas fir. And what I did first was I cut two pieces of uh, four foot by 18 inch strips. I then glued those two together so that I have a one inch piece of material. So the next step now is to start laying out the shape of the rudder. Over here on sheet five, the construction plan, we get a little more information about where the gudgeon needs to be placed on the boat. So you know, it looks as though that the um, rudder needs to be equal with the bottom of the stern post. So if I go up to the top of the bottom gudgeon, it's nine inches. And then if I go from the top the top gudgeon down, we have 32 inches. So I'm going to take a bronze rod and put through here to position those so that I can get them positioned on the boat properly.
I'm pretty happy with that fit. Um, you would notice that I attached the uh, pintle and gudgeons with temporary screws so that I can make some adjustments if I need to. For the final fit, I'll also need to mortise out the stern post and the transom to have the gudgeon fit flush in there. The other thing that I'll need to do is to start shaping the rudder. It has a little bit of a taper when it comes back, and of course, I'll need to attach the tiller. But we're going to have to save that for the next episode, because we're running out of time this week. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.